Hi, I'm Susan Jacob and I'm going to show you a technique for glaucoma surgery that I've started more than about a year back now and uh, I have termed it as SIGS SIGS or stab incision glaucoma surgery. This particular uh, case is one where I also combined it with FACO and what I'm doing basically is sliding the conjunctiva forward as you can see with a blunt instrument and I've taken a 2.8 millimeter bevel up keratome and I'm making a lamellar dissection through the superficial sclera till I reach the limbus. The right depth for the keratome is in such a manner that it is just visible through the conjunctiva. Once I reach the limbus, I go into lamellar cornea about 1 mm from the limbus and at this point I turn my keratome horizontally and enter through the deep cornea into the anterior chamber. I allow the full uh, horizontal extent of the keratome to enter so that I get a 2.8 mm wide internal uh, entry for the tunnel. And you can see in this manner, I have created an entire tunnel, a sclerocornial tunnel with just one single movement of the keratome. You can see the internal lip of the corneal tunnel right there and the distance that it should be from the limbus. Posterior to this is the scleral entry wound for the incision. And as the conjunctiva was slid forwards before uh, making your stab entry, the conjunctival entry incision lies further posteriorly. FACO is now proceeded with. Uh, care should be taken that the side port and the main port do not intersect with the SIGS tunnel. They should be kept at an appropriate distance from the SIGS tunnel. And uh, FACO is carried on just as uh, the conventional routine for each surgeon. You do a rexus followed by hydro dissection, nucleus removal and cortex uh, IA and followed by IOL implantation. And you can see at each stage of the surgery as seen here that there is no shallowing of the anterior chamber, there is no leak from the tunnel and there is no um, interference with FACO in any way by the creation of the sixth tunnel as it is still a tunnel and is self-sealing. At this point now with the viscoelastic still within the anterior chamber, a 1 mm Kelly's Dismiss punch is introduced through the sixth tunnel and used to engage the inner lip of the corneal portion of the sixth tunnel and you keep punching posteriorly till you have reached the limbus. Two or more punches may generally be required for this and once this has been done, you confirm the adequacy of your leak. This is done by first partly washing out the viscoelastic and then taking a cannula and irrigating BSS from the side port to look for leak from the tunnel. If the leak is not sufficient on irrigating BSS, you go ahead and take additional punches from the tunnel. This is done always after instilling additional viscoelastic into the anterior chamber so that no accidental bites are taken of the iris, secondary to the iris moving forwards due to a shallow anterior chamber. Again, you irrigate and confirm adequacy of leak and once you have seen a free flow of fluid which is the end point, the conjunctival incision is sutured and viscoelastic is removed. On passing the IA probe into the anterior chamber, you can see a physiological hydrostatic expansion of the subconjunctival spaces causing a formation of the bleb or a good ballooning of the bleb which is an indicator for post-operative success. The advantages of this surgery are that there is only a single 2.8 mm incision in the conjunctiva and absolutely no subconjunctival dissection which therefore decreases the risk of failure from scarring to a great extent. The amount of virgin conjunctiva for any future procedures if required is much more than if a conjunctival flap had been raised as in other techniques. The creation of the tunnel is easy in one step. Problems associated with flap tearing, laceration etc. that are sometimes faced with in trabeculectomy are done away with. Subconjunctival dissection or bleb elevation is via hydrostatic pressure of fluid from the IA probe when combined with FACO or by side port irrigation if uh, only a SIGS is alone is being performed rather than by scissors dissection as in conventional trabeculectomy. Hence, there are lesser chances of scarring. It allows faster surgery and is less traumatic and may be combined easily with FACO or mitomycin C if required. Surgery is easier and as conjunctival drainage channels are almost intact, absorption of aqueous is likely to be better. SIGS alone may also be done in a technique very similar to what I showed here when combined with FACO emulsification. The technique is essentially similar where the conjunctiva is pushed forwards and the single step entry is made into the anterior chamber followed by punching out of the internal corneal lip of the tunnel uh, which compromises the tunnel. This is followed by checking for uh, adequacy of leak followed finally by conjunctival closure. Care should be taken that the punch does not extend way beyond the limbus into the scleral side, which might cause excessively large amounts of leak and post-operative shallow AC. SIGS may also be combined with mitomycin C by stopping the tunnel short of entering the anterior chamber. 
applying a small sponge soaked in mitomycin C into the tunnel uh, for 2 to 3 minutes, washing the tunnel well and finally only then entering the anterior, anterior chamber and continuing with surgery as described previously. Thank you so much for watching.